I don't know about you, but personally, I've been really enjoying Disney's Agatha all along so far. However, there's one question that must be answered. How much of this show is actually accurate to witchcraft? We'll obviously need someone qualified to make such a determination. Hi, I'm Eric Arcadian, and I'm a witch. If it makes any difference to you, I've been trained and initiated into British traditional witchcraft, and my wife and I run a coven. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and we'll get to the bottom of this once and for all. What exactly has Agatha all along gotten right and wrong about witchcraft so far? I feel really optimistic about this. Me too, kid. Me too. Warning. Possible spoilers ahead for episodes one, two, and three. Down, down, down the road, down the witch's road. Down, down, down the... <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot you guys were here. Number one. Lots of us are okay with nudity. There is power in being naked. And to that effect, many witches do practice skyclad. When Agatha first comes back to reality in episode one, she storms out of her house without any clothes on and without a care in the world that she's naked. Now, while I am totally comfortable practicing in the buff, I'm probably not going to parade that fact around the neighborhood. That's just rude. There are kids, man. That was standing, I'll say it again. Ritual nudity is powerful. What did you say? I said powerful, but... Yeah, powerful. This one checks out. Number two. We can't actually control people's minds. Okay, I'm sorry to have to bring this up right in the beginning, but for hundreds, if not thousands of years, there's been so much fear surrounding witchcraft. And a lot of that fear, some of the stuff that might have sparked the witch trials, was in part based around people thinking that witches have an ability to influence people that is tantamount to mind control. Since the main plot movement in episode one centers around Agatha coming out of her delusional mind control trance where she's living in some sort of true crime drama, I just thought I'd get it out of the way that we don't actually have mind control powers. Wait, let me try something. I command you to click the like and subscribe button and leave a comment on the video below. All right, no, this one's a fail. Number three, we are goofy. A lot of people in witchcraft can take themselves a little too seriously. They forget that magic is sometimes one part reverence and one part mirth. One of the best feelings is when everyone in a ritual is doing something so ridiculous that we all fall over laughing. I can think of no better way to encapsulate that fact than this scene of Agatha trying to drive a fake car where the gas pedal is made out of a cereal box. Easy pass here. Number four, we do work in covens, sometimes. The driving force behind episode two is Agatha's quest for a coven. I'm not sure if I really like this definition though, where Agatha asks Teen what he thinks he knows about covens, and he replies that they're drawn together by mysterious forces of fate, and are the truest possible expression of sisterhood. It's true that many witches do work in covens, but there's also plenty that don't. And while you need witches to form a coven, you don't need a coven to be a witch. Not everyone digs the group environment, and it's totally legitimate to be a solitary practitioner. I will say that our members generally find us through seeking rather than being chased down at their places of employment. However, there is a story from the famed French occultist Eliphas Lévy sometime around the second half of the 19th century where he was sent half of a torn card with a magical symbol on it along with a note that only had the date, time, and place. He showed up and found the person who had the other half of the card. Now, I've always thought that would be a really badass way to summon people to our coven, uh, but from a practical standpoint, 
I don't know how much sense it makes. Either way, I'll give this one a pass. Number five, divination doesn't ever cause quirky flashing lights. I know it's a TV show that's full of fun special effects, but just so we're clear, this is not what actual divination looks like. This is what actual divination looks like. Hmm, I guess I could reflect on that today. This one's obviously a fail. Number six, we do hold hands and sing. The end of episode two really hits the proverbial nail on its head. We do love to sing and chant. And sometimes we even hold hands and stand in a circle while doing it. How could this not be your favorite scene so far? And the song, it's just so catchy. I've been singing it for weeks. This one passes with flying colors. Number seven. <sighs> sigils. In episode three, we get this random definition for sigils. Alice says, and I quote, a sigil is a redaction spell that hides something. In this case, you from witch folk. End quote. That is not what a sigil is. This is a sigil. They're basically just symbols that contain magical power, and you can easily create one off of a word or phrase like prosperity or new job. I based this one off the word wrong because that's what this scene is. Wrong. I'm not sure who Disney is paying as a consultant to fact check all these little witchy details, but in light of this error, allow me to throw my resume into the ring. Hard fail. Number eight. The moon doesn't have a water phase. All right, so our first stop on the road is this cool little beach house, which apparently has the moon phases on the door. It's full, the water phase. Yeah, so the moon doesn't have a water phase. I'm not really sure what the intention was here, other than to make teen look like an idiot. The moon could be moving through a water sign, like Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, and that would have sounded a little more intelligent. Again, Disney. I'm just saying. Another hard fail. Number nine. We do like wine. Hey, that rhymed. Wine! All right, let's face it. Lots of witches like wine, and I'm pretty sure there are some who would kill for a glass that refills on its own. Actually, cakes and wine is an important part of many rituals where we bless food and drink, consume some of it, and offer a small portion to the gods in gratitude. Hey, I might be reaching here, but I'll give it a pass. Number 10, there is no Book of the Damned or Darkhold or whatever. Yeah, those are works of fiction. In this scene, it was claimed that Agatha traded her own child for the Book of the Damned. Did you know she traded her own child for the Book of the Damned? There is no secret book of ultimate magical power, a witch probably does keep a personal book of shadows, though, but it's not nearly as nefarious. So, fail. Number 11, we don't have green skin or warts. A witch is really just another name for a bad girl. Is that right? No, Mrs. Foreman, no. I did appreciate this, though. Do you see any pointy hats in here? Any green skin? <laughs> any brooms? No, sir. Everybody is familiar with how witches have typically been portrayed in movies over the years. But for the most part, we just look like regular people. I mean, I think I look like a regular person anyway. And regular me gives this one a pass. Number 12, we do make potions, but they don't glow. We do brew a lot of strange things, frequently in the kitchen and maybe even in the sink. But more often than not, it's about as dramatic as making a cup of tea. Too many flashing lights gives this one a fail. Number 13, there are more women than men. 
All right, let's count the coven members. One, two, three, four, five women, one dude. I hate to paint with broad brushstrokes and generalizations, but this actually measures up to my personal experience in covens where, well, I'm the only guy. Pass. 13 is a magical number. Have you been keeping track of the score so far? Well, before we get to the final verdict, we're gonna have to go through the bonus round. Rabbits. Come on, you know every self-respecting witch has a cat. What's with this rabbit anyway? I'm sure we'll find out more as the season continues. This one's a fail, and Loki agrees. Let's look at the final score. It's an even split. Seven to seven. The jury's out for now. I guess all we can really do is wait for more episodes and see how things progress. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please remember not to take this video too seriously. It was kind of just for fun. My heart's racing. If you'd like to see more videos like this, either on Agatha all along or just witchcraft in general, please subscribe to my channel. I think YouTube wants you to go over here or something, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go watch more of the show. If you're waiting for a charcuterie, I don't think it's coming.